Soil quality is a tremendously important problem for us. We are losing a, a tremendous amount of soil each year. Soil is where you know everything starts. It produces our food, it produces our conservation habit, it maintains biodiversity, it has a biological component, it has a physical component, a chemical component. And all of these three have to have to work in concert and, 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 and in a balance. A lot of the work has been done in trying to understand the impact of bioenergy on the environment. We are approaching it by saying let's design bioenergy systems so that they perform with the right impact on the environment. Uh, what we are working on and this project is working on is finding ways where we can actually combine the production of biomass uh, with addressing other big environmental problems. Agriculture is one of the leading sources of nitrate leaching into surface water systems which eventually end up in the Gulf of Mexico so there's a lot of work that's being done to try and mitigate um, nutrient leaching from various sources. Nutrients are a, um, a dilemma for agriculture. On one side we know that in order to grow cost-effectively our crops, our corn, our soybean and, and other uh, important agricultural crops, uh, we need to apply fertilizer. For example, corn will typically use about 50 to 60 percent of the nitrogen that's given to them as fertilizer. The rest is lost. Um, it's lost in the air and it's lost particularly in the water where because it's very mobile and so it gets transported very quickly. This area of the field was probably the best in terms of mitigating nitrate loss. The thought was that if we put a perennial species such as um, shrub willow that have a very deep rooting system that they'll potentially intercept those nutrients and use, then uptake those nutrients and use it to um, enhance biomass production. And that's why it's so important for our project to address this and really find ways to capture that lost nitrogen and reuse it so that we don't waste a resource first and we don't create environment problem also. Willows are harvested every three years. So in between harvests, we have to sort of get a, a sense of how much biomass is actually being produced. Um, in this case, we're actually going to take stem diameters of all the stems on this plant um, at about 30 centimeter height. And then from there, I can actually get stem count from each of those. And we'll take a branch sample and um, get a dry weight for that stem and be able to then extrapolate that up to um, biomass per plant. We're tracking through the collection of soil water samples, groundwater samples, soil samples, and various tissue samples from the plants. We're collecting data on the nutrients. So all of this data could be used to fine-tune the predictions of the model. We can extrapolate the results into a wider area like the watershed or into a region like the U U.S. Midwest. Well, from the field, um, the techs bring us back samples. So we get vegetation samples back, we get gas samples, um, we also get some soil samples. And that will tell us a lot about what goes back into the field, what comes out of the field, and where our nutrients are traveling around, um, and that sort of thing. By transitioning from traditional uh, agricultural production system to an integrated system that we are proposing, you can see an improvement in nitrate loads you can see that from the traditional system you have this darker color that represents high nitrate loads to, to a better uh, water quality uh, improvement. By understanding this and documenting what we're finding with the use of bioenergy buffers, we can improve water quality as well as soil health and biodiversity. We host five to eight interns a summer, um, every summer here in this lab. So they have the opportunity to come here, um, work independently. Um, they know what's asked of them in the beginning. They get a workload. They get to work on their own time management. They start to work on their skill building. We have so much going on in this lab where we have one intern that works primarily on the gas fluxes. We have another one that works primarily on like water and then the DNA analysis. My specific project dealt with uh, ArcGIS. So in the field they have a uh, series of um, locations where they collect water samples from and I take that data and put it into a software and it creates a heat map of different colors displaying um, that data so visually um, it's very easy to look at 
My uh, project uh, within this group was uh, mapping uh, soil nutrient contents uh, throughout the field that we're uh, per conducting the experiment in. And so what we did, we collected soil samples in the field at discrete points, and then we used that data um, to extrapolate um, those values throughout the entire field. I've been working with the gas chromatography system to analyze the, gas, the soil gases, uh, soil respiration specifically, uh, in the field. Um, the gas of interest is nitrous oxide. It heats the earth much more than CO2, so that being such a prevalent uh, pollutant in agriculture, it's very important for us to analyze that and see uh, what impacts the corn versus the willows are having on that emission. My project looks more specifically into denitrification. And denitrification is a process where uh, soil, or bacteria in the soil rather, will be converting nitrates and other nutrients to nitrous oxide. So this involved going out to the field and getting soil cores. And we take these soil cores back to the lab, put them in vials, and we run what is called a denitrification enzyme activity assay. And what this is going to do is allow us to look at how much nitrous oxide is being emitted from the soils. Finding strategic places in the landscape where these crops could be grown could actually uh, improve uh, water quality. It could uh, not impact land use and therefore converting more land to agriculture. It could do a lot of other beneficial things like improving habitat for, for pollinators, for biodiversity and things like that. And that's exactly how all these pieces that, um, that uh, Colleen is working on and others in the team are working on come together under the umbrella of, of really looking at the total benefits of, of a new crops, a new cropping system, not just for the agricultural production itself, but combined with other ecosystem services.